Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is the place to be for tired parents who just know that their little ones could be sleeping much better. Well, this is the place to get all the answers for a good night's sleep. And in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about why does my baby wake so early? Why? Why, 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 why? And I know what it feels like myself because when my eldest was little, this was a big problem for me and he's a little bit wired that way. So I know firsthand what you're going through if you have an early riser on your hands. So stick around because I'm going to go through everything to explain why this happens. And that's gonna give you so much more insight and ability to overcome this problem once and for all. Right, let's delve in. So, why does your baby wake so early in the morning? When I say early, I'm talking pre 6 a.m. So in the kind of general culture that we live in where you know people work a nine to five kind of job, we have our school hours and so on, we're talking six or beyond is actually perfectly acceptable. Now, some people might not like to hear that, but it actually is for little ones. But if it's pre 6 a.m., it's still night time and you do not need to start the day that early. So why is your little one waking up at that time? If you're getting the, if you're getting wake ups before 4 a.m., then it's a night waking. And that's another kettle of fish. Wake ups at, I don't know, 9 p.m., 11 p.m., 2 a.m. They could be for all kinds of reasons. But the typical early waking time is usually between sort of 4 and 5 a.m., maybe 5.30, but roughly between 4 and 5 a.m. That's what we call early waking. And if your little one is doing that, then I'm gonna give you this right now in one fell sweep. The reason is, they are overtired. Now think about that for a minute. They're overtired, so they're waking early? Makes no sense, does it? You would think, well, they're overtired, they're, they're tired, they need to sleep in, they need to sleep longer. That's what you would think. But like most things with sleep, it's completely counterintuitive, which is why our lovely instincts and intuition when it comes to this lets us down because what actually is gonna work for a little one's sleep is usually counterintuitive. And that's why it's the hottest topic among parents, and that's why people like myself exist to help you and get you on track. So, yes, early wakings are caused by being overtired. It's to do with how it reacts in the body and how overtiredness creates actually a bigger influx of hormones that actually keep you going and keep you stimulated. And that's why we wake up more. You may have had this yourself when, um, I think always a great example to explain is like if you've been traveling maybe long haul and multiple countries and you've, you've got to an airport and you're like, oh my God, I just need to sleep, but you can't and I've got to get that next flight and you power on and you power on and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm not tired anymore. And you haven't slept, but you're like, I'm over it. I don't even feel tired anymore. And, and that's because your body has released these hormones to keep you going and you push past that tired window and um, you're actually overtired, but you feel wired. Little ones will often do this. They will zonk out to sleep. They will have a certain amount of sleep, but then they're awake and they can find themselves awake and wired because they're overtired. Anyway, that's another episode, but why? Like, where's this overtiredness coming from? And that's the first thing you need to look at. So I wanna run through a few examples for you right now so you can kind of understand why. Why is my, why is my little one overtired? Because it might not be obvious. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. So first of all, let's look at naps. How many naps a day did your little one ought to be having? And for how long should each nap be? Because, Sometimes you might think they're napping a lot, but actually they're napping very short, like cat naps, so the quality of the nap isn't great. So it's about the length and the quality. Um, also motion naps, so naps that are induced by motion or kept going by motion, um, can often, not always, but often be less of a quality nap as well because they're not going into deep sleep and it's like the motion is just keeping them down <laughs> and keeping, you know, like when you nod off in a car or on a plane um, as a passenger, you, you sometimes will, you know, you do that whole head thing and it's like you're sleeping but you're in quite a light sleep. Um, a motion nap could be causing 
light sleep your little one it could be that the nap's too short um and poor quality so napping generally are you getting enough most little ones are not so know what that looks like and if you're unsure then reach out to us because we have a sleep needs guide uh, there's one in my book as well and um, if you want to get your hands on that and it will give you a pretty good ballpark as to where you ought to be with those naps the other thing that goes hand in hand with this is the wake window. Now the wake window is how long your little one can be awake for in between sleeps. Now we have an ideal sort of target wake window based on the age and developmental stage, but what people forget, sometimes people get so hung up on the wake window and they're like, right, wake window is this long, now it's sleep time. They wake up, right, the wake window is this long again, and now it's sleep time, but actually what they're not doing is reducing the wake window after a poor nap. So let's say the nap would be best if it were 90 minutes long, but we're only getting 30 minutes. Well, then we can't do the full wake window. We need to reduce the wake window and bring the next nap earlier. So there's a craft to that and knowing that the optimal wake window only stands if we're getting the optimal amount of sleep as well. And the other one could be that bedtime's too late or inconsistent, moving around all over the place. And that's another thing that people do when they are focusing too heavily on wake windows is they allow bedtime to just be all over the place instead of anchoring in a set time that is consistent every evening, which really helps the little one's body clock. So um, there's one more thing it could be. There's one more place that if you're like, yeah, 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 and you've checked all of that off and everything is textbook, and you're like, but how is my little one overtired? Then, and only then, it could be that uh, they've got into such a habit with this early wake up that it's the early waking itself that's causing this overtiredness. So that's like a, it's almost like the last case scenario. So I'm gonna recap those for you. So maybe then you can have a think and spot why, where is this overtiredness coming from? Is it the naps? Not enough nap, too short naps that they're not resettling for, or poor quality naps? Is it the wake windows? Are they the right length, too long, too short? Like timing, timing's a big piece of this. Is it bedtime and that it's too late or that it's inconsistent each night? Or is it the early waking itself cutting their sleep short and meaning that they're overtired before they even start the day? The answer here is to find it. Once you find it, then you can fix it. So I want you to tune in to my next episode where I'm going to be sharing how to overcome the early waking. Right now, your homework is to go and look at where the overtiredness is coming from. So I'll see you in the next episode on overcoming the early waking and let's get you all sleeping soundly. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.